What's up guys, welcome back to the channel, and today we're going to try to get this evil wagon looking like an evil wagon, and that starts with the back of this thing, where there's no place to mount a license plate, since this is a JDM rear bumper, there's no mounts. So, you have your license plate, you have the little tabs that go down here on the bottom, that like hold it in, and that's it, there's nothing right here. So, uh went ahead and I stole the bracket off of the Lancer. This is off of the Evo or Lancer wagon, but there's no way for it to secure anywhere on the back of over here. So I made this custom little bracket. This attaches right here in the back to this like little cross brace type deal. So it attaches right there just with some threaded nuts. And then I'm gonna go ahead and rivet the guy right here and then we'll have a license plate light we'll have a bracket to hold the thing and then we'll have an actual license plate thing so I'm gonna go ahead and give this guy the rivet treatment and uh, I'm gonna see if it fits you think it's gonna fit Blake? probably this is a Trevi's custom bracket sometimes I'm impressed with the stuff that that I come come up with in a in a timely matter. This is just a simple bracket, but solves a lot of custom. Uh oh. I think I did it upside down. Yeah, that's that's upside down. <laughs> so now I gotta I gotta drill it out. We'll be back. Alright guys, so we got the rear bumper on here. Look at that license plate, looking great. Got this thing all bolted. It's kind of interesting, so it, it bolts up here in the front and then there's a bolt that goes down from the inside so it makes it kind of convenient for, uh, you know, bolting that down. So we can go ahead, give you guys the big, the big reveal of this guy. That, my friends, is an, uh, an evil wagon. So still need to put in these little tail light garnishes right here. Those guys are right here. So this goes on the passenger side. Clip in right there. Kind of fill in that gap of uh, the quarter panel. So we'll probably go ahead and stick those on real quick. Yeah, the next thing we need to do before we put on the doors, we want to go ahead and put in the front seat. Sean got the gauge cluster in there this morning. Got the steering column. This is the Lancer steering column out of the just the Lancer wagon. The Evo one, since it was in the wreck, it kind of pushed it back and did a bunch of crazy stuff. I'm using this one for now. And the airbag is also blown in the, the Evo steering wheel. So need to get a new uh, Evo steering wheel for it. We did steal the seats out of this black car. So this was the, the mystery auction Evo. And the seats in this car are way nicer than the ones that came out of the wrecked Evo. So this car has 90,000 miles on it, 98,000 miles or whatever. The other one had like 160,000 or whatever and was more of a daily driver. This one you could tell was kind of their nicer car. So nicer seats. We're going to put the nicer seats in here and then we're going to put the other ones in there. And then if I could find a nice set of them down the road, then we'll, uh, you know, play swap Rooney. So the other thing that we need to do is get the transmission out of here. So the wrecked car was an MR. So it had a six speed transmission and it was completely busted. We need to get this transmission out of here. We're going to steal this wiring harness for this front piece and this ACD pump, the radiator, the intercooler, some of the other lines and stuff in, in here just to kind of complete everything. This thing does have a forced performance turbo. I'm not sure exactly which one, but you can see right there. 
and has a four inch intake on the turbo instead of a three inch. And then it also has a set of RC injectors in there. So not sure what sizing it is. Uh, it is still on mass airflow sensor, but we're gonna get this thing stripped, put everything out of this into this guy. And then we could actually drive it. Yeah, look how clean this passenger seat is. Gonna get this thing in there and then we're gonna put the doors on it. I'm really, really excited to put the doors on it. Blake has been working on getting the door handles and everything in there, getting all the latches and stuff. We went ahead and pulled these out to paint so they actually look pretty good. There's no like overspray or anything on them. So it's just crazy how long everything took. It looks like pink or purple and then teal and then blue. But I wanna pull that outside by the end of the day though. guys so we have this thing outside officially for the first time since it has been painted and man it does some weird stuff and i don't even know what you'll be able to tell how it looks on camera or not but it it, it looks so interesting because it's kind of like pink and then it kind of flops to blue so like the top is kind of pinkish but then it goes to like a blue on the sides of it and it's uh it's really hard to tell what it actually looks like especially because it's so bright like the white underneath it is just so bright white but i absolutely love this whole rear end of it with the quarter panels and the little uh little guys right there on the edge the wide body thing and then painting that the little diffuser the little fins on the bottom in the the black i think that was uh that was the move for sure so yeah the bodywork and everything turned out really really nice on it this door was the door that we were kind of anticipating having a bunch of issues with right here you could really see the blue on this side of it. Yeah, we thought that this door was gonna be ugly. Uh, or this was the door that we had to do a lot of body work to. We knew that if we did the body work, it would turn out okay, but it's just nice to actually confirm that by getting it all done and uh, and seeing it out here in the in the sun. So yeah, I, when you have your, when you don't have your sunglasses on, you can't see anything. It's just so bright. It feels like it's just like reflecting the sun. So what do you think? I think it looks great. It looks interesting. It's like it's, it's weird. without sunglasses. How now that you've been outside, can you still look at it or no? It's just bright. It's super bright. Like the reflection from the sun literally hurts your face. It does. It does hurt your face. So we put the other doors on it, but interiors coming together. I really like these uh, Recaro seats. These are like the most comfortable factory seats I've ever sat in, as far as like a race car style seats. But man, when can we drive this thing? Uh, a week a week from about now a week yeah you said friday of next week no i said wednesday next yeah, that's week a week from today what's today today's wednesday yeah. so here in a week we should be able to drive this thing so next thing we need to do is pull this thing over here and start stripping the stuff out of uh yeah out as of if it. we don't have enough evo stuff all around the entire shop we're going to add some more to it by stripping that thing apart so that's great i'm excited for it yeah should we put the other doors on this one and then get it ripping Right, guys so it is a i don't know is this a sad day or a good day for this car first i don't care about this car so it's a good day let me get this one done i mean that, that is true so we have other plans with this down the road too. this car i initially bought from the the auction and the whole point of it was to steal everything out of it and put it in this and use this use this car as the donor car for this car but then as soon as we got this one, it, it was so nice. It was, uh, it was 06, has 80 or 98,000 miles on it. And it was a mechanical damage. So when we initially got it, some of this stuff was pulled off of it. There was like two bolts in the oil pan. And then when we pulled the oil pan, the crank girdle was off of it and it had some spun bearings in it. So the engine should be, you know, decent. It didn't throw a rod or anything like that. It, it just looked like it had some material in the oil. They pulled the pan and then said, screw it and sent it to auction. I'm not sure if maybe it ate some dirt. For some reason, I think this thing was a track car. The way that the bumper was, it had like some extra bracing. It has these track hawk tires on it. So it had a harness bar in it. It had four point harnesses. It had a GoPro thing here on the edge. 
had coilovers. Yeah, so they, so, they were just ripping the hell out of this thing. Yeah, so I, I mean, it was definitely some sort of a, a track car or they at least had it on the track a couple times. And that almost looks like what happened to it is maybe like it went off track, the oil filter came off of yeah. it, it took a bunch of dirt in and then they pulled the pan and, and the will do and they sold it to us. Yeah, they put it at the auction and then that was it. So that that's at least my, that's my opinion on it. But uh, we instead opted for, to save this car and I found another wrecked Evo 9 that was really, really wrecked up here in the front corner. And in doing so, it messed up the ACD pump, it messed up all this stuff, it messed up the wiring, and it also broke the transmission. So that was a six-speed car, and it broke the, the transmission case, and that car supposedly had a built engine. So that engine is actually over here on the engine stand, pretty much ready to go. It's stock Evo 9 engine, does look like it was rebuilt, but definitely not forged internals or anything like that. We're gonna go ahead and pull the engine out of here. We're gonna use the radiator, the intercooler piping, the fans, the wiring, turbo, all that stuff off it, as well as the transmission. And we're gonna put all of that stuff in. Eventually we are going to be putting another engine in this thing, whether or not it is another one of these or not, that is uh, to be determined. But for now it is getting sacrificed to save this guy. So pretty, uh, Kind of a sad day, kind of a, uh, a good day, because this thing kind of looks like a car now, and as soon as we get this transmission and everything in there, and the engine. We're gonna drive it. Yeah. yeah that's gonna be a good day, you're not gonna have to mess this thing ever again anymore. I feel like we could almost drive it in the next like day or so, if we, if we, if we really, really did it. Yeah, but you know, we got lunch, we got our mandatory 15 minute, you know, two 15 minute breaks today, and then we kind of get distracted. I'm sure Dave or somebody will show up, and then we'll just end up not getting much done. I mean, the goal is we're gonna get this this whole thing done, right, Blake? Mm -hmm. Blake doesn't want to. Blake doesn't want to hesitate anymore. This thing's just it's coming out. Coming yeah. Out. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right guys, a little bit of a discovery. So we've never had the air intake off of this car. And again, like, like I said, it looked like it hit something on the track and maybe they didn't have an air filter. You can see how much dust and stuff is actually up here in front of the engine. So even in the engine bay, you can see all the dust and stuff. But looking at the turbo, you can see, obviously that's a pretty gnarly turbo. I don't know if it's like an FP red or a black or a green, or maybe it's a blue because the because it's it has a blue you know compressor wheel you can see the dirt that it actually ate and uh, and how it chewed up the fins on it and then also how how much oil is coming out of that so probably what ended up happening is went off track didn't have an air filter on it ate some dirt started getting some uh some blow by right here you can see because this is the pcv this goes right in the turbo because you can see how much oil is in there and then they either did a compression test and then they pulled the oil pan seeing all the bearing material in it and then that was uh that was probably it i think that's what would happen it probably wasn't actually knocking looking at the bearings it didn't look like it was knocking it just looked like there's a lot of bearing material and the bearings were really scored so yeah we're uh, pulling out this transmission, gonna clean up the transmission, and then we're gonna mate, mate it to this engine back here. I pulled uh, pulled this out of the clutter over there, getting this thing all cleaned up. This is bone stock, so bone stock Evo 9, Evo 9 it was supposed to be a like a two liter long rod motor, whatever that means. It definitely looks like somebody has had this thing apart, so I'm assuming it was refreshed at some time. Uh, I think he said it had like 30,000 or 40,000 miles on it. So uh, OEM Evo 9 turbo, obviously. Uh, so I think probably the plan is we'll just throw this thing in Maybe throw some injectors in it, turn it up on E85. I'm really curious to see how a stock Evo 9 drives with like these turbos, because this is a really common upgrade for like Evo 4s through 8s. Everybody's like Evo 9 turbo. And then maybe what we'll do is send out that FP turbo to get rebuilt and inspected, or we'll throw like a Garrett, like a 3071 or something on it, or a 3076. I think that would be sick eventually when we do the 2.4 build on it. So right now, I think that's the plan. We're gonna leave the 2.4. We're gonna play with that stock engine for now. Just get this thing running and driving. Sean is over here working on the headliner. So this thing was already kind of dirty when we got the car and then it got a little bit more dirty. Us, you sitting know, sitting it around, cleaning it, taking it out. So he's gonna clean this thing up and we're actually gonna spray it with an interior paint and change the color so it'll be like dark. It'll, it'll almost be black. It's kind of like a really dark charcoal gray. So paint that get the headliner up in this guy right here and get the engine out we're uh 
We're fipsin' today. All right guys, so I got the engine out of the car Buddy. and I feel like we did this absolutely like the hardest way we did. that we could have. Like, I, I don't know why, it just, it, it seemed like everything we did, it was like we were doing it the wrong way and it felt like we were backtracking. It's called it, Trevi's, Trevi's Bass Ackwards way of doing things. No, I just happened. thought going out the bottom, which I think that's kind of how you do it. Uh, we moved the, trans we unbolted the transfer case, ratchet strapped it to the side, dropped the engine mounts and then kind of wiggled it and did some other stuff. But we had some things like the power steering pump, AC compressor, all that stuff. We left some of the wiring. and So we ended up just fighting ourselves a lot getting this thing out. But an interesting thing, so this thing has 1000 cc RC injectors. It has this FP turbo, which I'm not sure exactly which one it is because it has blue fins in it. But it is FP, the little plate on the front where they normally like say like FP red and like the, the specs, it's not on there. But it has this clutch, which this clutch is a clutch max. Is clutch max. Clutch max. Premium. And it does not, here, you wanna go ahead and pick that up? It doesn't look like it's ever been used other than, look at that. Chum the flywheel. Like, not even once. It looks like they maybe started the car. I don't know, it's weird. And backed it out of the shop and then it was either knocking or making noise. Or maybe they, they maybe finally- Maybe they thought the clutch was what was making noise or something. Yeah. And replaced it, put a clutch in it, started it, still making noise, pulled the pan and realized there's a bunch of material in the pan. Yeah. Who knows? That's that's what makes sense to me. But that's crazy. I, I, clutch Max, it's a white clutch. It, it looked brand new. It, the thing, weird thing was, is the whole transmission is super dirty, but- Like it's not been- But the clutch is brand new. Yeah. Like- It's really weird it, anomaly. I don't know what's- It's know. weird, like it, it's almost like somebody like snapped their fingers and just installed a new clutch without touching anything else. So kind of an interesting deal uh again i'm not sure 100 what we're gonna do with uh with this thing what kind of clutch was in the other one i i don't know it's over here in a box is it like a multi-plate clutch not a multi-plate but like a six puck or something the clutch is i don't know we'll look at that one whatever clutch is better especially since we're putting a stock engine in this thing i really don't want to like drivability wise is that well drivability wise i don't really care i'm i'm used to driving really yeah really crappy clutches or the way that they feel at least so i don't know uh, what do you guys think happened? That poor turbo. I'm really sad about that turbo because I think there was an FP zero turbo on giveaway Evo and that thing absolutely ripped. Um, obviously made it 735 horsepower, but yeah, uh, it feels like it's ball bearing. So now we just need to steal this rest of this wiring out of here. And then this thing's pretty much going to storage for a little bit until we could figure out what exactly we're doing with, uh, with a bunch of stuff. See, this is, I guess the only reason that good reason to have that lift is because you could open the doors and do all that stuff too. I don't know. We're going to. We're gonna figure it out. All these bits are, are going in the other guy. Just need to get the clutch and everything off of that, push that engine to the side, and then we'll figure we'll figure something out. It turns out that that clutch is actually, it's called a Clutch Max, and it's either $88 or $120 on eBay for that thing. So definitely not gonna run with it. It looks like it's a new flywheel. Got the transmission off of it. Blake went ahead and got it all pressure washed, and we were getting ready to kind of assemble the engine and everything together. But I decided I would rather have a new clutch in this thing, especially if we do turn it, tune it on the stock turbo 
and stuff for now i would rather not have issues throwing some cheap clutch in there especially with how much of a pain it is to get the you know the transmission transfer case it's like a six hour job if you know what you're doing and it took us a little bit longer than we thought. Now, like I said, this thing might get a uh, another engine in the future. I'm not sure exactly uh, exactly what that will be. I, I think it uh, I think it would be cool. I think it'd be a lot of fun. You guys will have to let me know what you think. We should put in this thing. I uh, I have some stuff laying around the shop that might might be able to make a lot of power in there. Yeah, this thing's looking really good. Got the doors and everything on it today, and. Uh, yeah, really stoked about all that. Turbos were just laying around, kicking around the shop. And Sean was working on this thing a lot towards the end of the day, getting the wiring harness and everything out of that in there. So yeah, uh, let me know what you guys think we should do with this car. If we should put it away in storage for a little while, if we should hop into another project with it. Not 100% sure, but uh, yeah, if you guys are not entered into our VIP uh, 500 horsepower sleeper Civic giveaway, again, motionotv.com, grab a VIP membership. If you grab one membership, if you grab two memberships, every dollar you spend on membership is an automatic, two automatic entries for a chance to win this thing. So if you wanna buy like, if you wanna get like $100 worth of entries per month, you just buy four of them and then we'll ship you physical things every single month. Uh, but yeah, all details and everything for that are on motionaltv.com. Uh, once we do a couple more things to this, I'm gonna do valve stem seals and then get uh, maybe a flex fuel sensor and some other stuff tied into the ECU. We'll go get it re uh play with that a little bit, and then actually take it out on the street and kind of beat up on some stock cars or like some Hellcats and Coyote Mustangs and stuff. I think it'll be a lot of fun and uh, make it a little bit more relevant for right now. But yeah, I think there's a pretty cool lineup in the shop. We got uh, two Mitsubishis, we got two Hondas, a Supra, all that stuff. But appreciate you guys watching, and we'll see you in the next one.